In this video, I'm going to go over like what makes a good programming project. Um, we're going to be going over this because one, like the projects that you have, if you don't have any actual programming experience, like your projects are going to kind of define your, your career. And what I mean by that is it's going to lead to how much money you make. So if you don't have actual work experience, projects are like the only way that you can actually demonstrate that you know how to program. It's the only thing that you can really do that counts as experience. So we're going to be going over and talking about like what makes an actual good project. Um, I have about five, four or five years of experience. I worked at Citibank, worked at Easy Post, was a college student looking for internships. And so these are just my thoughts on what I would do for projects, basically what I've seen um, from talking to companies, things like that. Uh, so yeah, let's go into it. So number one, like projects are, they give you more interviews right? Without work experience. And those more interviews means you get more job offers, which means you get more money. So that's why we're talking about this. Okay. Like what is a project? So one thing I want to talk about is like what actually makes a good project uh, there. I think there's probably several different types of projects that you can do, right? So there's like the, uh, even before going into that, because I think this is actually like the most important thing, like the, the most important thing for projects that I think is just motivation. Like people don't do them. Right. So like I could give you like the keys or whatever of like, oh, well, a good project should have, um, you know, C plus plus or something. And it should be like, it should combine, you know, like, like fancy algorithms. And then at the very end, it should do like, you know, this is this, but like most people, I feel like don't even do projects. Mo most people don't code in their free time. So it like the bottleneck is just being motivated to actually finish the project or even just do something that's a kind of kind of uh, relevant to it. And to follow, kind of back this up, I think Primogen actually has a video on his YouTube channel where he literally talked about this maybe like three days ago. But like, essentially he was just like, guys, like just do a project that you find interesting because when you go to the interview and you like start talking about some boring, some boring to-do list that you did and you integrated it with like, you know, I don't know, some like OAuth thing or something like, he's essentially going to find that boring and like, he's just not going to care about it. But like, if you talk about like, oh, I built a chess engine because, you know, I love playing chess, then he's going to be like, you know, actually more, you know, more engaged. So yeah, there's two types of people, like people who kind of like try doing like these projects that aren't that cool, aren't that impressive and aren't even, aren't that technically complex versus like people who can dig deep, can find something they're interested in and actually dive deep. So I do want to call attention to that because I think it's like super important. Um, okay. But like what actually makes a good project? Like, let's say we're, we're trying to min max. One thing is like a question we want to ask is like, what is it? What do you think a hiring manager looks for? And when I think of that question, like what, what would a hiring manager want in an interviewer? What do they want in someone who has like a job and things like that? Um, I'm thinking like, okay, they don't want, they want someone who doesn't write spaghetti code. Right. And so we can kind of make this lesson actually reverse out. What does a good project look like? So, uh, one, no spaghetti code. So that means like, we probably want to have good comments, good comments in our projects. Um, we want to have test cases in our GitHub repo that we put the project inside so that the hiring manager can look at and be like, wow, this guy's like, doesn't write spaghetti. And um, overall, you know, kind of just good structure, like good OOP structure, essentially. So um, the hiring manager also probably has like a lot of work done that needs to be, that they need to do. And they want someone who can do that. And so that's where the engineer comes in, is that someone who can kind of be hardworking, right? Kind of, it's unfortunate, but yeah, I think they want someone who works long hours. Um, this, is, this isn't related to projects, but like works a lot. Uh, number three, like, can they work on a team efficiently? So if you can have, I think this is where, if you can have like group projects, this really shines because they want to see like experience. And they're also gonna maybe ask you questions about when was the time you had to work with somebody and you disagreed with them. That's like a very common behavioral question. When did you last have a disagreement with somebody? How did it go? And the answer to that, like the good answer for that is, oh, uh, we had a disagreement and, you know, no problem ended up happening and like the project still worked out versus we had a disagreement. I stopped talking to the guy forever and I hate his guts. Don't do that last one. Um, and so ideally when you can do this, you can one, talk about it with your hiring, like with the hiring manager when they actually start interviewing you and two, like when they, even before they interview, they'll say like, oh, hey, this person has team experience. So I don't have to like train them on how to communicate. So working in like a team, if you can work in a team, I think that's like a good thing because just because of like how I'm kind of like, you know, reversing this, right? Like a hiring manager does not want to have to like teach you how to do that. And can someone do the work fast? That's another thing that they probably want. Someone who can just like, they get assigned the work, they do it. They get the work, they do it. And five is... Uh, do they even like programming, right? Like the worst thing for a hiring manager would be to hire somebody. And then like six months later, they say like, oh, I'm going to leave. I actually don't like programming anymore. So this is where like the passion projects, I think are really good because if you don't actually care, if you have to make a to-do list and you don't actually care about it. And then when you start talking about it, like you don't seem like you're passionate about it. You don't seem like you even care about it or that it was like important to you at all then like the hiring manager is going to like kind of ignore it. It's not going to be memorable. Like one, it's not memorable, right? Like won't be memorable essentially. And they're just going to kind of forget those like, oh, okay, he made like a two digits thing versus like someone who was like, oh, I made like a, you know, a chess engine or I, there's other examples too. I can't even think about it, but yeah. So like, this is what we want, right? We want to get repo. We want to have good comments, good test cases, good oop structure. 
Um, and essentially, ideally, we could want to work in a team, but if that's not possible, then okay, whatever, right? It'd be cool if you can work with like a friend and say, hey, I made, made this thing and then doing work quickly. I think there's like a sixth thing too, which is, is it in a corporate environment? Ideally in some kind of corporate environment. Um, so like doing things like prod, you know, production, um, like CI, CD pipelines, CI, CD, having like multiple layers of development, I think is like a good thing that they'll kind of like look for. So yeah, so like, so, and we can, I'll simplify this even further to just say like, when you make a project for that you're like coding something is like one, make it something that you actually like, you're passionate about slash enjoy. And this is where the self-awareness comes in. I don't know if you guys were listening earlier, but earlier I said that like, it's important that you meditate, that you know, like kind of yourself, what do you enjoy so that you can kind of leverage this. This is gonna make it to where you're way less likely to kind of give up on it. And uh, you'll, when you actually have to talk about it or put it on your resume, it'll be something that you can actually like use. So this is what I would do if I were you know, kind of doing this over again. I would do something like that. Um, I would add good comments, add like good comments, which is, this is, this is the easy part. You just add good comments, um, test cases and the repo, and then like just overall have like a good oop structure. And then um, I would you know, try to add some CDI CDs or something, add like a CDI CD to it or like other things to make it like simulate a corporate, like a corporate environment essentially. Um, so like using Jenkins, for example, like I would try to like do some stuff like that or Trello, essentially something I can use to simulate so I can say, hey, I don't have work experience, but that's okay because I actually have done um, all these things that you guys are kind of doing already at your job. So yeah, so like do these, yeah, if you have like these three things, this is actually probably like a good project, right? And like this is like really abstract and but like when you combine these three things, it kind of becomes impossible to have like a good project. So you actually, what was this like projects programmers should try or something? Isn't that that guy? Didn't he say this? Let's go into look at this. So this is something in an article that some guy said, but like when you actually do these projects, you actually just get involved with a lot of like, so this one's like text editor, right? Um, but like the thing is when you set out to build something that you're kind of passionate about is that you have to explore and like you end up solving like really, really similar problems. Um, there's like some overlap between like all these projects and, um, again, PrimeGen says, you know, these are good. These are good projects because you're learning like one, you're learning data structures, right? You're learning how do you actually like implement, um, things in this case, like a text cursor, you get to learn design patterns, right? So again, remember what I said here, right? Good comments, test cases, good oop structure, right? You get to learn some design patterns. Uh, you get to learn again, more design patterns, abstractions. And you actually have to implement something. You actually have to build something. So that's like the big part. And all these projects are going to end up having these things, right? Like this guy just kind of gave up these challenging ones, but, but you don't have to have a challenging one. You could just have like a, a normal one. You end up by default, like end up practicing and learning these things. And this is why too, like, I feel like the, a lot of like the, at least I don't know the, the engineers before they worked at Google that I had talked to, like, I kind of knew that they would, because they would do this stuff for fun. I had a friend who are like six months into like computer science. He was like, oh, I'm going to build chess. And he literally just coded up chess, like straight up for fun, which is something that like nobody would do. So. Let's look at, I guess, one example too. I think I, there's like this YouTube video. It's got this idea from um, this one guy. What is it? Uh, Cloudsy. What was it? Cloudsy. I think it was this one. Or it was one get projects like this on your resume and maybe this one that I saw. I think it was the, this one though. So like, we have all been there. This video was like pretty smart, I think, right? I didn't think about like putting comments in the code and stuff like that. But like, he kind of goes over like this repo. I don't even know if he had, even links it. No, he doesn't. Okay, whatever. But like, one year, he has a GitHub repo. He has a nice little readme. Oh my God, like it's better than like the default one. He actually like decides a Python program that reads JSON YAML and sends the request. Teaches you, like shows you how to install it, how to work with it. Like, look at this. This is good. This is what you want. And the second part too, right? He has tests inside of it. So like when a hiring manager just very briefly like checks out your GitHub, they're going to see this, right? How's your classes? Like things are formatted in like a, a non-dependent type of thing. You've got functions, right? This is like a good project for, you know, a freshman or a, even, you know, someone in college who, who, or someone who just doesn't have programming experience. Like this is what you want. And we'll just go over like that as an actual example, because a hiring manager is going to look at this. And they're going to say, oh, well he's hits, he hits all these check marks. Like this is nice. This is nice for like an entry level thing. Now let's see here. Other kind of ideas too, like a bonus idea that I'm kind of thinking about is, is that you can have, so like maybe going into like this corporate point, having some kind of corporate environment is I'm, I wonder if you can just say like, I built my own startup, which is actually an extremely, extremely easy thing to do is building your own startup. Like the hard part is coding it, but I wonder if that counts because now you get to say that, like you've talked, you talk to users you get to say that like you built something that people actually use actually valuable to someone 
And these two things are really nice, I think, to talk about because it shows that like you can you made something valuable to someone. Well, you can probably do that same thing at the company. So like, yeah, I don't have experience, but I've already built valuable things for people. I can bring value to your company and help you make more money. Right. That's a pretty nice sell, I think. So one thing I kind of think about is instead of personal projects, you just say like, oh, I built my own startup. I don't know if I'm kind of surprised people actually don't do this. And I'm surprised the idea doesn't come around because it feels like it would work. But maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about this. But like, I wouldn't mind if you just say like, oh, um, I made a chess engine and then I like posted on Reddit and now you've got like a hundred users or whatever, like a hundred people tried it, maybe like a hundred people used it or something. If it's, if it was a good app, people will use it or if it solved the problem. Um, even with this one too, right? Like this guy did what did this guy do believe rooms guy. So this guy made a, a, an app to just fix like lead code essentially to make lead code better. And he's got seven ratings on it. <laughs> Granted the stars aren't super great, but like he can say, oh, 4,000 people downloaded my app which is pretty nice. Again, it just says like, hey, you kind of built something and all he had to do was just, he built it, saw a problem, built it, it works, posted on Reddit and now people know about it. People try it, they download it, whatever. And like the, the, you did the exact same thing here, the exact same thing, except now you just get to slap one and say, it's a startup or like, I don't know, maybe you don't have to say it's a startup, but maybe you just focus on like having users and you just literally just post, post something on social media and um, see if people take on, or I guess in a more advanced thing, you. Uh, do like dev logs or something so like you you i guess share it online and and talk about it in like a youtube video or something i don't know but but anyways so this essentially is it for like just building a project like again I, the biggest roadblock people have is they just don't want to code so like, like just a lot of people just don't like programming and a lot of people don't like they don't like programming they don't like doing leak code they kind of just want to collect paychecks like they want to make a hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars with like doing very little so this is essentially like how you would and if you do this you do this three times you get like maybe three three things on your resume um you follow like these you know these kind of you integrate these things you're gonna have amazing keywords and again notice how i didn't even actually talk about any of the languages um, i didn't talk about like c plus plus or like java or like python because none of that stuff really matters. What does matter though, is like that the project that you align with is gonna, is going to go into like the job you want. So uh, for example, right? Like we go into Indeed right now, let's say like entry level, like software engineer, right? Uh, we can see some jobs that are here. So this is what Akama in Orlando should have like their descriptions. And so they're gonna say like things that they want, right? So, okay, familiar with Python, Linux, right? So these are gonna suggest that if you're looking for jobs like this, well, you should probably do a project that has Linux in it and Python in it. Do your project in those languages. And it's going to like imagine, right? So like you can kind of tell like how about how much a market is for a language is if you say like Python software engineer, you see there's 16,000 jobs here. OK, cool. What about C++? OK, there's 3000 jobs, right? So there's more for Python. So you can kind of maybe gauge about at least on how much demand there is. I don't know if if I did that wrong though, but like if I type in Rust, okay, well there's 400 jobs with Rust. So you probably don't want to learn Rust. It doesn't, it's not bad, but like you probably don't want to learn it for um for these because then when you click on them and they say, oh, well we only accept Rust developers or something. And it's like, there's only 400, like why would you even want to do that? That said, most of them don't actually gatekeep super hard, but it does happen where they'll say like, yeah, you just don't see Rust. So I think it would be better. Like, I mean, you see Rust, uh, C++ is 8,000 jobs, uh, mobile. So like what's Swift, 300 jobs, right? JavaScript, 10,000 jobs. So you can kind of play around this. That said, I think JavaScript is pretty overloaded on, on devs. I think everybody's kind of jumped into web dev and mobile dev has been like kind of left behind. Um, so I think there's like a lot of supply essentially. There's a lot of like bad JavaScript devs and they're all competing for like the jobs, too many of them. So that is it. That is how you create a programming project to impress hiring managers. Again, if you did this like three times, just put like three projects on your resume or maybe you just keep building them out you just keep doing that and you just have like a page of just like all the projects you've built. You just have a long list of just things you've built and you submit that to somebody. I, I would, pro I might, I'm kind of curious about just ditching the one page resume in this, in this market just to go strictly on keywords, but like just, you just keep going longer. You have a long list of projects you've built. Um, I don't mind that actually. I don't know. Other than that too, uh, another kind of idea I had was like working for doing like freelance jobs. So maybe like doing like free apps for like an actual person for an actual client. Um, or it's like free or like highly discounted, free or highly discounted. And then at the same time you get the project and then you get to say, oh, I did this kind of in production, but I don't know. I'm not sure how much companies care about that at all. I really don't know, but this is an idea as opposed to just doing like pure passion project.
So like, for example, if I were to like go on like Upwork or something and Upwork is filled with people who want like <laughs> really, uh, really bad developers who it's filled with people who want really bad developers for a really low price essentially uh but doing like a project like these are filled with people like this so you could just dm them and say like hey i'll do it for free uh python support for small job like zapier but this is something i would consider doing because you get to say oh i've worked with actual businesses or like you can actually kind of build something or you can actually make a little bit of money you can make a little bit not a lot but better than nothing so that is that all right thanks for I'll see you guys later